Hello everyone, I'm Reza Tangestani and in this video I'm going to talk about subroutine code. First of all, I'm going to explain how Abacus uses subroutines to solve the FEM model and then I'm going to give you an example to make it more clear. Before starting, we need to know a few things. First of all, we know each model contains a few steps. For example, if we have a model that has a two seconds, it might have two steps with one uh, second. So, and each step is divided to a few increment time. So each model has step and increment time. We know that we have 2D and 3D elements. Usually we might have different kind of elements, but right now I'm I only talk about the 2D uh, rectangle and uh, quadratic elements. Each element in 2D shape has four integration points, as you can see in here, and four nodes. But in 3D, we have eight integration points in the middle, and you cannot see this because in the, they are in the middle of the geometry and it has eight nodes. So I think for, these are the important things that you should know before starting. Okay, in Abacus, we have a model. Each model contains the elements. For example, if you have a 2D elements, as you can see, it has four integration power and four nodes. Abacus sends these data for each integration power in each step and increment type. And Bortran code will receive these data and process on these data and it sends the result to this exact integration point and by doing this loop after finishing uh, for all elements it can solve the model for that increment for example if we have a code for subroutine we have these variables that we can use these are the variables that abacus sends to the subroutine and f variable which is load is the variable that we need to send from intel compiler to abacus so for this example, Abacus send these variable in for each integration point to Fortran. And after compiling this data, Fortran send this answer to the exact uh, integration point. And after doing this, we can have integ uh, results for all integration points and then for that inc increment so we can solve the displacement by abacus i think for now i give you the idea but i'm going to explain it more with this example we have a model in abacus as you can see it has a lot of elements in here in the first increment of in first step we are in the 0.1 second then abacus in the first element of that model we can see this abacus send this data step increment time element number and the coordinates everything for the first integration point so you can see the the step is one increment is one time local and global is 0 0.1 same as here element number is one the integration point is one here so it sends this data as you can see the coordinates is written here the intel code uh, received date this data so uh, based on the code that we developed it, re uh, it retains the answer to the that integration point after that it sent abacus sent the new data for the second integration point and then the code returns the result for the second integration point and then for the third one and after that for the last one you can see that fortran code returns the answer after finishing the first increment first element abacus goes for the second element and again for the first uh, integration point of the second elements as you can see here second element the first integration point it sends this data with the new coordinates uh, of this integration point uh, to the intel code then intel code can get a uh, process this data and returns this value to the first integration point. After doing this for all integration point, Abacus goes for the third and then for all ele elements. Then after finishing all elements, Abacus has all the results for all integration points. So now it has load on all integration points. So now it can solve the model for the first increment. Then Abacus go, can go for the second increment. In the second increment, as you can see in here, the time is changed, the number of increments is changed, but again, it goes to the first elements for and for the first integration point, as you can see in here. So Abacus again send this data to a Fortran code and a Fortran returns it 
result to the data LMS for that in, uh, increment time. After doing this for all increments, Abacus can solve the model for all uh, increments in the, in the first step. Then you can go for the second step. Second step, uh, it goes for the first increment. The time is, for example, in here 1.1. 1, 1 .1. Increment number is changed, and then the local and the global time are written in here and then it sends the data for the first integration point again to the code and then code returns their uh, data to the add integration point. Uh, this loop repeats again and again for the all increment for that step. After finishing that step we can have our model, we can have our results for our model. So I think that's enough for now. I hope you could understand how Fortran and Abacus works. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope enjoy you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please let us know so we can improve our videos. Until the next video, bye.